and finally the fourth side of the triangle. So the slaves, off they go through plantations throughout the Caribbean and plant the cane, cut it with machetes. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the Caribbean itself. The Caribbean is a 500-mile arc of islands, uh, you know, Key West off the tip of Florida, hop over to Cuba, and then uh, the arc of islands goes all the way down to Trinidad, like 20 miles uh, off the coast of Venezuela. Well, you got Cuba, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, and then, you know, just 40 miles, St. Thomas, where uh, our, our superstar troubadours are headed today, St. John, St. Croix, St. Martin, uh, you know, all these islands were uh, pawns in a never-ending shuffling of uh, chessboard of colonial powers. Uh, even some islands had uh, the British controlling the ports because they were more standoffish, you know, not the natives. They had that attitude. Uh, well, the, the, the French, oh, gee, they loved to fuck the natives, you know, like the French Canadians. <laughs> became part Indian real quick. And so the French often inhabited the interiors and the British had the ports. And the strangest story of all is St. Martin. I mean, they became exhausted, the uh, Dutch and the French. Oh, no, do we have to shoot it out again? Well, I mean, these two captains swaggered up to each other drunk. And they said, no, look, let's play a game. <laughs> Colonialism is a huge game anyway. You pick your, your most fit sailor. I'll pick my most fit sailor. Let's put our swords in the sand right now. And uh, one goes one way around the island, the other goes the other way as fast as they can. And where they meet, <laughs> We'll put our swords in the island again, and then you got your half, we got our half. It, it's the same today. St. Martin is half French and half Dutch. <laughs> and the smugglers just love it. I loved it because, oh, say you had a bunch of energy. Oh, let's say money in uh, the Dutch part of St. Martin, and you want to like launder it and put it in a bank. Uh, Bank of Bari. You just like drive your rent a car over to the other side of the island. No internal checks. So, yeah, yeah, say Martin, you keep going down island. Uh, you hit Guadalupe. Oh, fantastic. Butterfly shaped Guadalupe. Uh, and in between, oh, my favorite island, Dominica. 365 rivers, mountains, great people full of Rastas growing marijuana. And then on the other side, Martinique. <laughs> so you're going for like British uh, Dominica, French Martinique, and then Grenadine, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, St. Kitts, Montserrat, Nitzerat. Ah! And finally you get n down near South America and you get like a Trinidad, Tobago. Yeah. 500 miles. Uh, and sailors love it because you can visually see with your naked eye the next island all the way down. There is one place from St. Thomas to St. Martin where you have to, you can't see the next island. But otherwise, yeah. And uh, so the Caribbean's famous for world yachtsmen. And the Greek islands, those are the two mm -hmm. jewels of yachting on planet Earth today. Well, <laughs> Safa and Sax, they're so used to the scene now. I mean, you've been busking, you've been performing, you've been putting yourself out there. 
Uh, and people have been responding with compassion and quarters and nickels and dimes and paying you $16 a week rent. And yeah, so they're like, yeah, let's go to a new world. They're, they're excited. And oh, here comes uh, Raphael back dragging a heavy cloth suitcase. And yeah, he does have 60 pounds, okay? Oh, Tennyson, huh? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to take that to the hippie haven. Yeah. Ooh. Big splash on my return, huh? Raphael Tennyson, I told you it's Sunday, huh? I had to pull a gun on the kitchen staff at the Caribbean Hilton during the middle of a travel agent convention. Tennyson, uh, look, here's a hundred bucks. Uh, thank you. I owe you one. Machismo hand slap on prison. Hand slap, yeah, okay. Well, 60 pounds of the good stuff. We're targeting the most primest, finest beef steaks in Puerto Rico from the richest hotel. Yeah, these steaks, 20 bucks, huh? You want a, you want a, a little bit of that, huh? Well, uh, so um, he's going to take that over to St. Thomas. And carry on luggage, you know. And, uh, yeah, spectacular kickoff to his return. Okay, yeah. Oh, Raphael. Uh, and it's, it's going to be one badass barbecue. You're such a gringo look, uh, I love you, bro. Well, okay, Lord Tennyson gets the show on the road. All right, we're not talking about a 25 cent bias at this point. No, he. Cabby. Oh, he speaks fluent Spanish. He tells the cabby, go, it's La Valda. Airport, please. It's an unusual airport in that it's in on the edge of San Juan Bay. It's not the international airport. Oh, you know, they don't have jets. They only have uh, amphibian seaplanes. Indiana Jones, big wooden propeller on it, two huge pontoons, take off land and jungle, bays, jungle everywhere. Well, yeah, the driver, he drives up to the East La Verde Airport. I mean, La Grande Airport, and through a dilapidated, rusted out, Freighter containers, dilapidated shops, uh, dangerous place. Mm -hmm. There's a maze of rusting, decrepit freight offices. Yeah, this barrier uh, reeks. Smuggling. Lots of it. Well, there it is. There's the hand uh, uh, painted sign. Antilles airboats to the Virgin Islands. Oh, well, by now it's 10 o'clock. It still gets hot at 10 o'clock in the tropics. It's already 90 degrees. And uh, that pathetic panting air conditioner sticking out the side of the, uh, taking a r dripping, making rusty, ugly streaks. Uh, where the water drips down the side of the corrugated tin. Mm. Well, Tennyson scores three tickets. Yeah, on the the goose. That's what the natives call it, the goose. Uh, it's an air boat. It floats in the water. Uh, 1950s rickety seaplanes. It takes off right here, right out of San Juan Bay, which is sheltered from the Atlantic. It's like inside the bay. You go around El Moro. Right. Okay. Um, there's no, or it's nothing's organized about. There's no, like, you're going to check in a bag. <laughs> so they open the a little hatch at the back of the plane. Throw your own shit in there. We're going to be leaving soon. So it's just like a pile of you know, tawdry luggage of all kinds, and that's an, well, it's pretty heavy, 60 pounds, but he, he gets it up in there, and uh, 
You know, he notices though, uh, in this 90 degree heat, uh, the uh, the beef steaks inside mm -hmm. starting to defrost and oops oh a trail uh, of red blood leaking out of the corner of the suitcase all over the back of the plane nobody knows Look, everybody on the plane is a smuggler. They gotta keep track of their own hustle. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. All right, let's take off to the Virgin Islands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 